Okay, the last thing we're going to start uh, uh, working on is our last uh, class module, our last big module. And I'm, I'm sort of merging two things here that we originally were going to do as, as separate, but that's okay. So one of the things is uh, to grab um, some consumable item from at least three different places. Uh, one item from at least three different places. And so you can do that while you're going to do this next assignment. So it, it, it'll be a, a separate thing, but it, it's really, you can just do it at the same time. So you, don't, you can just double dip. And the idea there is, um, in looking at, we started talking about pollution the other day, right? And talking about um, what's going on. One of the things that's really uh, come to epitomize sort of people's, oh, what, did I say something funny? No, there was a fly on Ben's ear. Oh yeah, so Ben, ben got attacked by a fly, okay, excellent. Uh, one of the things that, that's epitomized the challenges um, and sort of the scariness, obviously, are, is the topic of plastics and microplastics and all the stuff we've been talking about. Um, and in particular, um, very conspicuous consumption of, of single-use plastics, as, as, as we probably all know, has become a big, huge thing, right? And so that has led to, in recent years, different uh, uh, bans on these things. Carpinteria. Um, was one of the first locations. Carpentry and Berkeley were, were two of the first locations to do this at the local level. And since then, it's, it, they've spread. They've spread to other cities. They've spread to counties and now to, indeed, states and things of that nature. Famously, um, even though we were starting a, a, a ban in California, when the pandemic happened, the governor um, uh, put a pause on that, right? Put a pause on it. So we used to, for, we're used to going to uh, Vons or the supermarket and getting our our groceries in a plastic bag, and then that had just kicked in that, hey, you know, if you want to do that, you got to pay for it, and all that kind of stuff. People were starting to use more cloth bags and things of that nature. And then all of a sudden, the pandemic hit, and they're like, oh my God, we're afraid of contamination and all this kind of stuff. And so therefore, we, we paused the, the um, efforts to get rid of single-use materials. That pause has been unpaused, so we're back to the, that, that um, scenario. And so the question is, when you just go to these random restaurant, get lunch or whatever, um, grab something that uh, either you can get it and just wash it, um, you know, you can use it and wash it, or you can just get a clean one. Um, but straw, uh, you know, tableware, forks, knives, a container, a clamshell, something like that, um, whatever they have. So you're not looking for plastic stuff. You're just saying, hey, I went here. I want to get a straw. What, what's their straw, right? And so um, uh, what you're gonna do is you're gonna take that thing and then you get a Sharpie or I'll have, I'll have paint pens in a couple weeks when you're gonna bring them in. Um, and you just need to write the name of the place, um, the, the city that it was and the, and the, the date, right? And then, um, and then we will start to process these. We probably, because the machine is down at the moment, we probably won't be able to do all of them, but we'll keep it for like a future class to process. Um, but the idea is what, what is being at our places right now? What, what is the management landscape right now? Are people giving us plastic stuff? Are people giving us sugarcane based straws? Are people giving us bioplastics? Are people giving us regular plastic straws? Right? And so, um, so by, by documenting the place and the date, that'll help us understand how this thing is, is playing out, right? It could be it could be straws. It could be straws. And then it's only one item per location. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. You can get more, but you only have to get one. But if if you grab a couple, that would be cool. But but yeah, the idea is different places. See what see what the see what the happening is. And so um, yeah, so I'll just pass this around, and you guys can get the idea. Right, we'll write on them like that. Um, cool. Okay. So that's it. Um, and that that's like. 10 seconds, right, of being in the place and grabbing one. So it's not a, not a big deal. Um, the, what we will be doing, though, is we're going to be doing one more set of uh, investigations here. To, and the, the overall overarching aspect of this is how sustainable, we're going to start talking about fisheries in the next, in the, over the next few weeks, how sustainable is our seafood supply is the question. How sustainable is our seafood supply? So, um, here are some data sheets, and let me, uh, actually, let me, let's skip that for a second. Okay, 
so we have we have uh, data sheets for markets and we have data sheets for restaurants. The first one I want you guys to do, I just want you to do a restaurant. Restaurants a little bit easier. So um, so I just want you to pick your favorite restaurant uh, and and to do this right. So again, just like other stuff, can't be campus, can't be CSUCI, right? Um, somewhere near your house or whatever this weekend you get lunch or, or whatever, right? So you don't have to, for, for this first one, you don't have to go out of your way, just, just do something convenient. Um, the only requirement is the place has to sell at least one seafood item. So if they sell no seafood, you can't, you can't do it there. If they just sold one seafood item, that would be okay. It would be better if they sold multiple things. Um, but for this first, for the first trial balloon here, uh, that's the only requirement, okay? And so what you're going to do is you're going to uh, see, so we're, we're going, okay, let me step back. So the idea is, can random person from, you know, so we're environmental science people, we like, care about this stuff, we read all these articles, like, is this sustainable? Not? But we're going to pretend we're not ESRM people. We're going to pretend we're random person off the street. And I walk in, and I am curious about where their seafood comes from. But I'm not, a, not an expert, right? And so I'm gonna say, uh, hey, so here's a menu item. I'm gonna look and I'm gonna, so we have, in terms of the restaurants, we have stuff broken down into, oops, excuse me, appetizer, Jesus, what's going on here? Appetizers and entrees, just because some things are like a small thing, like a side dish or an, or a, or an appetizer, or it's like a major item that you get to eat. And so you're gonna, um, count how many entrees and appetizers there are. So we know, you know, is this place serving five items, this thing serving 50 items, whatever. And then we're gonna articulate, we're gonna write everything down. So I'm gonna say, this is fish tacos, right? Let's say they have fish tacos, right? So fish tacos, and it's an entree kind of thing. And then, uh, now, so uh, especially in the pandemic, this became a big thing. People are like, hey, I just did it online, it's okay. You have to do it in person. You can you could start online. You could look up a you could do like some preliminary stuff and get some of the stuff there, but you you do not you're not doing what the generic menu that's been up for four months is. You're doing what they're serving at that point in time. Again, if you, if you start with an online menu, that could that could quick that could make it easier for you because you have some of it filled out already. But you can't only do it online. Okay. Okay. So you're gonna go there and you're gonna okay fish tacos. Hey, um, so. What fish is in the fish tacos? And they're gonna say, cod. And I'm gonna write down cod. Ideally, they tell you, if it's probably Alaskan cod, but, but whatever, they're, they're, gonna, they're, gonna, they're gonna tell you whatever they tell you, shrimp, right? They might not know where the shrimp is, so it's shrimp, okay? Um, and then you like say, oh, shrimp, where's your shrimp from? I don't know, that's fine. So if they said, I don't know as far as the fish, if they said, I don't know as far as where the fish is from, okay. I'm gonna put those down as unknown. Well, I know it's a fish, so I, I don't know what it is, but I know it's unknown fish, right? Um, and location, unknown. The sea or Costco, people will say like, okay, so that doesn't really help, right? So by fishery location, I mean where it was actually harvested in the ocean from. And then whatever the price is, whatever the price is of it, right? Um, how did they how do they catch that? How, and, and usually they're gonna say, I don't know, right? And so then that's just gonna be um, uh, uh, you know, probably unknown. But if they say something like farm raised or wild caught or dolphin safe, right? We're just gonna tick gonna tick these things. And that's it, right? So I'm gonna ask them. Sometimes a conscientious server will say, Oh, let me go ask the chef. At which point you're like, Yeah, cool, please go for it, right? That's cool. Love that that happens, but you don't ha you don't you don't need to force them to do that, right? If they volunteer that, that'd be great. If you're having a conversation and they want to do it, that's great. But but we're we're pretending we walked off the street and we're trying. So so a lot of our conversation about management, a lot of stuff you guys hear about, a lot of stuff you seem to focus on, are government regulations, right? Are the requirements you must do this, you must do that, and those are that's an important part of management. But other part, but there's all kinds of other ways to exert forces, right? We heard about from the metals company, an effort to try to create market forces to have more sustainable metal supplies and things, right? And so, so this, is, this is a bit of a, of, a, of a hybrid exercise. 
So this is collecting data, but it's a little bit of you also being an advocate, right? So you're going to go and you're going to say, hey, what's this? What's in this fish taco? I don't know, right? Why might they say, I don't know? Because it's not important to them. They don't care. I guarantee if 100 people came in this week and said, what's, what fish is that? They would know, right? You're going to find that a large fraction of what we see in the next couple weeks is unknown, which is super, super, super bizarre. That would be like saying, what's in my salad? Plants. Like people wouldn't, if, 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 if a server said plants, I'm like, I'm not, what do you mean plants, right? Tell me what it is. With seafood, that has not been the tradition in our society. We're like, okay, fine, meat. All right, give me meat, right? Uh, it, it's, it's, it's strange. And so um, while we're not trying to push anybody into any one particular behavior, you are asking about this stuff. And sometimes we hear, oh, it's, it's definitely happened in the past where some restaurants like, oh, the last time somebody asked me that was last year. And it was one of our previous students, right? <laughs> so, so, um, so, okay, so, so that's the deal. So, so the first thing I'm gonna do is, I'm gonna, yeah. So, so you do it with um, all of the seafood that they have on the menu? Yes, so any item that has any bit of seafood in it, that gets entered into here, right? So I'm not gonna write down, I'm not gonna write down vegetable lasagna, right? I'm going, to, I'm going to count that so I know the total number of appetizers on it, but I'm not going to write down every single item that's in the, on the menu. Only a seafood thing. So it'll usually be a fraction of the menu. Um, and so, uh, but, for, but for every one of those things, though, I want, you need to sort of figure out what's, you know, what's species, where it's, where's it from. Right. Each one. Yeah. Regardless if you're going to order it or not. Right. Okay. Yeah. Right. So hello, 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 hello. We're talking about this right now, right? Yes, I get it. Um, so, uh, so speaking to that point, I'm not going to go to, you know, a restaurant that ha I mean, we need to go to all different kinds of restaurants, but but so some that have a lot of stuff on their menu, which is totally cool. But I'm not going to do that Friday at 5 p.m. Right when the wait staff is running around and try, you know, I, I want to be respectful. Do you have to buy food at that place? No. I think it's generally a kind of cool, you know, a nice thing to buy a taco or something at least, but, but you don't have to buy food there, right? You don't have to go at any one particular time, but I think it's, it's, it makes sense to sort of plan your visit on the sort of not busy time, so we're not ticking people off, right? Most people are really curious about this, um, and when we start, we ask them, some of them will, will get into some conversations with, which is cool. Okay, so the other things we're doing is, is are some general things. And so you're also going to say the name of the, and so uh, to, be on, to be clear, we're not, we never um, out anybody, right? So we, we keep track of this because we've been doing this for 20 years now, and we like to know what, what's what, but we never share this. We never share locations with anyone or anything like that. So we're not trying to get somebody in trouble, one. We're not trying to say that you're a hero, the other. We're, we're just trying to collect data here, right? Um, but you do need to say where it was, right? The date, the time, the, the, the name of the restaurant, all that kind of good stuff. Um, and then you, you, tell, you say if you think it's cheap, mid-range, or expensive. This has gotten hard now. You guys it's all, they have a very wide range of what you guys think are expensive or cheap or whatever, but, but take a stab at it. I'll, I'll adjust it later. Uh, the cuisine. I don't know, general American, or it's a sushi restaurant, or you know, just some general idea about it. And then... Um, uh, this one uh, we've been asking the last couple of years. I don't really, um, well, well, let's have a discussion, but, but I think we can probably drop this now. But we had a COVID-19 question. Um, uh, but one thing that, that, is, uh, that you do still have to do is Prop 65 warnings. So this is not one you're going to ask anybody about. You just walk in the restaurant. So all the stuff so far, you're just walking in the restaurant. You're not talking to anybody. You're just, this is just, you know, you're, you're making your observations. And so Prop 65 was from our former Senator Cranston that passed this years ago. And this was, this was a, a well-intentioned uh, bill, but this is the thing that says when you go to pump your gas, gas might be toxic. And, you know, that the, the, the toxins are present, uh, basically, proposition or law. Um, Prop 65 uh, includes metal contamination. 
many of our predatory, oh, many, I uh, should be careful with that. Um, sharks, tilefish in particular, swordfish, have an increasingly high body burden of methylated mercury in their tissues to the point where at least some of them cross the, the barrier of, of the warning sign for Prop 65. So if folks serve cod or kelp bass or something like that, probably it's, it's legit. They don't have to have any sign. But if they serve any type of top predator, sharks, swordfish, that kind of stuff, they, um, technically speaking, you should have a, a Prop 65 warning sign in their restaurant, right? And so when you walk in, do I see that anywhere, right? Again, you're not gonna spend hours looking for this, or you're gonna walk in, just kind of glance around, do I see it anywhere? And so that's a yes, no. Um, and then, as I said before, uh, you don't have to write down all the appetizers, but we need some sense. Is this a restaurant that has 1% of their, of their stuff as seafood, or is it like 100%, right? So that's why we, you just write down as a percentage, it's fine, right? What is an example of tilefish? Tilefish. What? Uh, I've just never heard of that fish. Uh, yeah, so, um, so we'll get more into names in the future. For right, for right now, just, just, just write down whatever they tell you. I thought it was like a family of fish. No, I mean, I mean, names are, I mean, we could spend, honest to God, probably three weeks just talking about names. So names oh, okay. have become a huge political tool and people have actively invented new names for things um, so that, that sound more attractive. Um, uh, 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 Patagonia, yeah, Chilean sea bass is a classic example. It's not a bass. It's not, it's, you know. Uh, orange roughy is another example. Red, the, the worst term, the worst term is red snapper. There are fish that are red that are called red snapper. The people have called red snapper forever, but the va but the vast majority of what people call red snapper, who the hell knows what they are? There's probably about seven, diff eight different families that when people say red snapper. So, so again, um, for now, I don't want you guys to stress out about that. Just write down what they say, because it really does require a lot of preparation to go into depth. But you guys should just realize that. Okay, that's the other thing. I'm going to believe what they tell me here, right? For example, um, there is no such thing as farm-raised swordfish. But they might tell you, oh, it's swordfish. Oh, you really, how, how was it caught? Ah, oh, it's, it's, it's farm-raised, right? So I'm going to just write that down. We will, we will make a note of that. But, but again, you're not, the point is not for you to say, you liar. Like, you know, that, that's not what this is about. This is, this is random person, right, walking off the street just trying to get some information. Right? Again, the, the motivating, fee, motivating factor here is some seafood is more sustainably harvested, some is less sustainably harvested. Is there enough information for you to make a choice? I'm not saying what you have to buy, but, but if you wanted to exert your political power, if you wanted to exert your economic tools, is there enough information for you to make an informed decision, which is, is the driver of this exercise, right? So they might be lying to you, but, but I'm going to say what they told me. Because you might understand they might be not telling the truth, but the random person walking out the street probably does not. Does that make sense? Yeah. Okay. So in the last little bit, um, so just about, so it could be that all of this so far, potentially, you could get without talking to anybody. So if the menu is well articulated, you could get it off the menu. If the, you, know, you see the signs, but, but even if everything is already spelled out for you, you do still have to talk to somebody in, in, the, in the restaurant. And so uh, years ago, we used to do two. We used to require everybody to do two separate servers. That just got too complicated. So you'll see the data sheets have, and when you go to fill it in, it'll say server one, server two. If, if you're hanging out all day, watching the football game and then yeah, talk to two different servers, but, but you only have to talk to one person. So even though it says two, just one is enough, but you do have to talk to somebody. Okay. And it's probably gonna be the wait staff is the person you're going to talk to. And so, so gone through and, and I said, Hey, uh, yeah, here are my questions. Oops. Where, do you, where can you see it? Where, where do you see it? There it is right there. Okay. Hey, yeah, I'm just wondering, I'm doing this, I'm doing this 
uh, you know, project for this crazy professor of mine that makes me do all this horrible stuff. Um, so have you ever heard of MSC or Seafood Watch or anything related to sustainable seafood, right? Yes or no? So very generic, very forgiving. Have you ever heard of anything like that ever? And so they're going to say yes, no, or I don't know, or something, right? OK, cool. That's all good. The next one is how many of your customers, and we, we need a relative measure here, right? So how many of your customers um, ask about uh, sustainable seafood, right? And so um, in, invariably, some will just give you a verbal answer. Say, hardly anybody, right? And then you're like, really? Like, so how many this week? You know? And there's like, yeah, if they keep saying like hardly anybody, just write down what they say. But ideally, we'd like to know if that like 1%, is that half of the people? Do you know what I mean? Like, like some, some kind of relative measure. Um, because we have, just look at the data, we don't know, is this a place that has 20 customers a day or 2,000 customers a day, right? So we, we, need, we need some kind of, some kind of help us estimate that. Okay, then next is, so how many people ask where the seafood comes from? How many people ask about the source of their seafood? Same thing, relative amount. And then um, the last one is uh, when people ask you anything about any of your seafood items, what's the most common question they ask? And th this will be a variety of things. We will bin them. We will bin them. I'll just tell you, the vast majority are going to be about preparation. Like, like how do you cook it? Or if it's a supermarket, how should I cook it? Uh, you know, is this spicy or you know, stuff like that. Um, the next most common one is almost assuredly, if it follows like the last 20 years, is going to be, um, uh, is it farm raised or wild? Most people have no idea what that means. But they've heard it, and so they'll, they'll ask it. And they, they just sort of ask it. Those two broad categories are the largest responses. And then there's other things, but those other things tend to be a small fraction of, of the most popular or most common answers. Uh, unless it's like some sustainable vegan, vegan, uh, you know, pescatarian specialty restaurant, that, and then maybe people ask some specific things. But, but generally speaking, those two things. So, so there we go. And there's a place for just general comments, right? General comments about like, oh, this, this place looked really cool, or it looks super sketch, like the, the guy was angry, you know, what, whatever the, the case may be. Cool? Yeah. And how many of these do you have to do? We'll talk about that later. The first one is just to do your favorite place or a place that you go okay. uh, the next, you know, this weekend, next week kind of thing. Okay. Because we also, also, also have to talk about how we enter the data and all that kind of stuff. But so let's, let's get one done first so that we can figure that out. Correct. Well, we have the trip, but yeah. So the, the formal, like, in-person class, the following week we just had class Tuesday. The week after that is our last week of instruction, and then we have two classes the week after that. So while I understand that this is important, I, I'm not sure I can see what we are going to be doing with the data if we can have time. So you guys, will, you guys will be looking at previous year's data, because I won't have time to process yours for you. So I'll, I'll give you guys previous classes data. Okay. Um. So uh, the question that I, ha that I have for you guys, though, that we need to decide as a group um, is uh, I think we should probably drop this question. This question <laughs> where the students really wanted to figure this out like in the wake of the pandemic and because things are really changed. Obviously, things are still changed post-pandemic. Um, hard to get wait staff and all kinds of stuff, but, but it seems like for better or worse, things have kind of stabilized. I, I don't think things are changing that much, but um, but I, I can be correct. I can be convinced otherwise. But what do you guys think? Yeah. Okay. Cool. So um, I'll go through and just and just delete delete that. And 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 this question here is: Did you collect foodware? Did you did you collect anything? And you just say yes or no if you if you got a straw or something from that or a fork or something from that place. Okay, so uh, so I just wanted to, since we don't have class next week, right, it's gonna be a while since we, I, I see some of you guys, so I just wanna make sure you guys went over that. I'll have this, I'll have a detailed module up on this, but I just wanted you guys to see that. So for now, just want you guys to go collect that data. We'll talk about the data entry 
um, or I'll make a video about the data entry, but, but for now, just take a stab <laughs> at doing it, right? Um, uh, I should say that we have, um, we, have, uh, we, we have a restaurant data sheet, we have a market data sheet, and then we have, um, we then have an example of a filled out data sheet, right? So, so again, this is not how you're gonna enter the data. You're gonna enter the data into a different tabular form, but this just sort of shows you, like if you wrote it down by hand, those are the kind of stuff you sort of fill out, right? Just to hopefully make sense, right? So this, so this person like, this, it was a shrimp cocktail, check that, and it was an unknown shrimp, and it was 695. They didn't know the fishery location. They didn't know, right, Th that kind of thing. The only thing that I've not mentioned to you guys that we haven't had a lecture yet about, um, but I will post one, is about um, this, the, so, well, we need to talk about all these things, but basically we have two main approaches to, when we say sustainable seafood, there's two broad categories. Uh, real briefly, one, is um, a type of certification. Just like we say, this drug is you know, FDA approved or whatever, right? That kind of thing. Where there's a formal official mechanism. It could be government based. It could be voluntary based. That, that has some kind of seal and, a, and, a, and an assurance that when I buy this, I'm getting some type of seafood that was, that was managed in a certain way, right? Uh, Dolphin safe tuna is an example of that. Um, uh, Marine Stewardship Council, which is what this is, MSC is an example of that. More on that, it, that that's actually an example of a third party certification. Um, so more on that, but, but suffice it to say, that's, a, that's a, um, an official thing associated with the product. The other major uh, way people figure stuff out is through what are ge generically called green buying guides. And so that is not an official certification, but it's, it's recommendations. The most famous of which is the Monterey Bay Aquarium Seafood Watch program, of which some of your alums now work for them. Um, and we started this project originally based around Monterey, uh, the seafood watch cards that didn't seem to reflect our conditions here in Southern California. So one of our trips, we went to the uh, Monterey Bay Aquarium, and we were talking to them, and they said, they said, oh yeah, we don't update what people are buying. We said, oh, what if we did a class survey, and then we fed the data to you guys at Monterey every year so you'd know what people are buying? And they're like, okay, that sounds cool. So that, that was the motivation for this thing. Um, so those green buying guides, there are, are various uh, versions of those, and they just say, hey, we recommend eating tuna. We recommend not eating tuna. We recommend eating American lobster. We recommend not eating American lobster and things like that. And they've gotten more sophisticated, but they're essentially just a guide versus some type of official certification type of thing. Cool? If, and I don't think you'll, this probably won't happen, but I'll just mention it because theoretically it might. So MSC has what's known as traceability. So a key part of this is, um, yeah, a key part of seafood is filet. I cut off, I cut off the side of my, um, my body, and that's what I eat. And um, people that know about fish can tell kind of what that thing is, but a lot of people can't. So very famously, scallop, people will get skates or rays, punch holes out of them with a cookie cutter, and claim that those are scallops. And most people are ignorant and they don't, and they'll say, oh, I'll pay all this money for scallops, right? So, so there's, um, so traceability is important. So obviously if we have a fish in front of you, I can say, oh yeah, that fish is whatever, Atlantic salmon and da 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 da, right? But if all I have is a, essentially a part of the tissue, it becomes harder. And, and some of this is nefarious, absolutely. People mislabeling stuff so they could charge more for it or something, or or charging more, because you can charge more for wild caught salmon, they have farm brain salmon, and then we do it with, we, we claim farmed salmon as wild caught, like, so that definitely happens, one. Two, there is a massive logistics supply chain that brings sea, most seafood to you. So it gets caught off the Cook Islands by an Indonesian trawler that takes it and sells it to a middle processor somewhere in China that then takes that and sells that to the 
people that make the breadsticks, and the breadsticks people do it to this person, that person flashes it. And so it potentially goes through many, many hands. So some of that is nefarious. Some of that is just it, people lose track. And it's like, I don't know, it's fish sticks. I don't know where it came from, right? Uh, and so, so figuring out where, what stuff is or isn't is, is a challenging process. Traceability is one of the responses to that from a sustainability thing. So if I can trace my food through all of the places it's coming from, then I can be assured that I know. When they say it's species X, I know that it's species X, right? And so if you happen to encounter a, an MSC, um, Marine Stewardship Council, third party certified item, it should have a unique identifying number on it, not per fish, but for, per lot, such that you should be able to take that number, type it in, and find out, one, what the species is, two, where it was harvested, and if it was a processed thing, like a fish stick or something like that, where it was processed. Um, and so I don't, it, the, we, we tend to rarely encounter those in restaurants, but, but if, if you were to encounter some MSC stuff, in the comments, I would just write down that unique identifier, but probably you're not going to see that. Does that make sense? So we have, so just use the, the restaurant field data sheet. If you're confused what to put, you can look at the, you can look at the um, uh, uh, example one. And then uh, because we're not doing the surveys, the problems I mentioned before about uh, the, the difficulty of, um, Spanish speaking, our Spanish speaking colleagues not maybe too interested in talking to us on the clipboard, that doesn't really apply to this. So if you want to do your survey in Spanish, you totally can. Um, and so we have Spanish, it says all the same questions, but basically we have um, the Spanish uh, language questions in here as well. Um, so, uh, and, and that's totally legit. If you want to, nobody has to do anything in Spanish, but if you wanted to, you're more than welcome to do that. Uh, yeah, you just put a question mark, but in the comments say, I was describing the comments, they, they said Costco is the location. But yeah, for the, for the data column, it should just be an actual physical uh, thing. Okay? All right, so um, I, we have a few minutes left, about, about, about 20, 25 minutes. Um, again, you guys are doing one submission per your anal analytical group, so I wanted to give you guys another you know, 20 minutes or so to, to chat amongst each other if you guys still need to get together. Um, uh, again, one thing is being submitted, but this is a group project, right? So, so hopefully everybody's working with everybody and, and some folks aren't completely blowing this off, right? Um, so if you've not taken the quiz, right? If you came in late or whatever, please take the quiz, which is posted on, the, on our announcements. One, two, um, uh, make sure you guys are, are chatting with your buds and you guys are working collaboratively on your, on your uh, group analytical uh, stuff. Cool? Rock and roll. All right, thanks you guys.